Howdy folks, welcome to Psychological Testing. This class is fully asynchronous and um, it's going to be taught by me. I'm recording, editing, and managing this class uh, from the inside of my way too small apartment. Uh, we are literally in my uh, living room. So we may be interrupted. It is very likely that you will see my cats because they love to be in shots because they can. But anyway, let's back up and start talking about this class. It's asynchronous. Um, come on, next slide. And uh, all the course content is going to be on Canvas. So this is an upper level psychology methods class. I've already said it's asynchronous. Um, this format is deliberate and I deliberately converted this from a face-to-face -face class. So, and why do I tell you this? Because it may feel like a lot of work, but this class is comp like very comparable to my face-to-face -face version of this class. So I've thought carefully about how I've converted this class in terms of both time spent, your time spent, and the formatting. So the challenge we, you will have with this class is to make the time for it because it may feel like, oh, it's an online class. I don't have to take it seriously. You need to carve out time. Uh, you don't want to cram this course material because it builds on itself. And as a three hour course, you're expected to spend about nine to 12 hours a week on this class. So in a face-to-face -face version, that would mean about three hours of in-class work or lecture and discussion and six to nine hours outside of class. So for this class, that means about two hours of video lecture and about an hour of classmate interaction and engagement, while an additional six to nine hours of studying per week. So if you find yourself um, spending way more time or way less time, please schedule a meeting with me as soon as possible so we can figure out what's going on. Uh, because, and you can just book that directly through Calendly it's really straightforward. It links directly to my calendar. I swear it's not scary. Uh, and you will show up right here because this is my office too. But the reason why I encourage you to touch base with me is so we can figure out what's happening. Um, and maybe come up with some tick trip, some tricks and tips. Uh, and I'll probably direct you to watch the how to be successful in an online class, which I'm going to is going to play right after this. So, so that's the course. It's all on Canvas. Videos are hosted on YouTube. Um Yeah. Um so I'm Mason Garrison. I'm a quantitative psychologist by training. My background is in behavior genetics where a lot of the same statistical techniques are used and also using archival data analysis. So a lot of what I do isn't develop new tests. It's rip apart old tests and modernize them so I can get modern measures out of tests from like the 1930s. So while on the surface it looks like I'm a weird fit for a class like this, I'm actually a pretty decent fit. Now, in terms of interacting with me, I am here. I am available. Literally, I will pro I'm in this chair at home more often than not. Um, but I'm readily accessible via email and Zoom. Uh, all my office hours are by appointment, and you can book those directly in Calendly. So I've made my... Um, office hours by appointment so that I can be accessible when you need help. Trust me, it is a way better use of my time 
and your time because filming these videos, editing these videos, doing audio pro like is a it's a lot of time and I can't do that if I'm trapped in a Zoom room by myself when no one visits. So I'd much rather be spending that time making content and actually meeting with you rather than just sitting sadly in that Zoom room. Yeah. Um, in terms of teaching assistance, so it's possible that I have a graduate student TA, but uh, it's it depends. But what I can guarantee is that Tuki, my um, main cat, the not the quarantine foster f forever foster kittens, um, will be making guest appearances. I actually kicked him out about thirty seconds before this filming began so it's possible that we'll see him in this video he's the orange one uh the other two cats i have are um archie which is short for archimedes and annie which is short for anastasi yes uh as you will see pretty quickly i named my cat after the author of our textbook this color choice might not be ideal because it might get edited out by the green screen. So you may see an overlay. But anyway, um, I have no control over the cats. They let me live here. They will be in sh shots. It's just, it is what it is. I, but let's, let's keep moving forward. Learning goals. So the big learning goals of this class are to acquaint you with the fundamental vocabulary and logic of psychological measurement and behavior assessment. Uh, another goal is to develop your capacity for critical judgment on the adequacy of uh, measures and do they actually measure what they purport to measure, both in terms of just like prediction as well as theory development. So. Third one is to acquaint you with some of the key ideas in personality assessment, psychometric theory, and methods of observing and measuring behavior. This is Archie. Thanks, cat. Can I? <sighs> anyway, so. Fourth is to instill an appreciation and interest in these principles, both the theory in general and behavioral assessment in particular. They're pretty cool. Now, what this course is not, this course is not designed to make you an accomplished psychometrist. So I will not be training you on how to give tests. Uh, first of all, as you'll, as we progress through this course, you'll figure out that I'm not qualified to give these tests either because I'm not a clinical psychologist with training in administration. Uh, while I'm qualified to make them, uh, you, but you'll, yeah. Um, so nor is this class designed to make you a skilled psychometrician. So one who constructs tests or repurpose them, uh, but at least, at least it gives you, Archie, please. This is one of the quarantine kittens. Yeah, so they, they came in in March, right before lockdown. The idea was to foster them. But anyway, I know I've just distracted myself, so let's back up. So... Uh, this class isn't designed to make you a skilled psychometrician. But what it is, is aimed to allow you to understand and appreciate some of the fundamental theoretical issues concerning both the psychometrist and the psychometrician. It also aims to give you a little bit of hands-on experience with psychometric computer programs, not advanced ones like... Lizrel or M plus, but or even although I would disagree that SPSS should be used for psychometric methods, it is used for them. Uh, but what I will do is give you some hands-on experience 
with R, which is kind of the modern psychometric and statistics software that's open source and free and very marketable. So throughout the class, I will be giving R examples and your homework sets will be a mix of qualitative and quantitative and they will use R. I mean, yeah, it's easiest to use R. So I'll show you how to do it in R. If you want to use SPSS, I would caution against it because I cannot help you with it. So like, you better be right. Um, so, but let's, let's keep going. So textbook. Yes, this textbook is a thousand years old. I was eight when this edition was published. The first edition was published before my mother was born and my grandmother was eight. And there's not an online version. However, I really love this book because it covers the statistics in a really accessible way. Also, it's super cheap. Like you can get copies on Amazon for like five bucks. So in previous semesters, I've lent, I've accumulated uh, four or five copies of this book to lend out to students this semester. I can't for a couple of reasons. One, um, many of those books got spread out and I just told students to keep them. So I'm slowly accumulating them, but don't buy the new one, like the print edition. It's like 200 bucks. Just buy it used. It's fine. It's fine. So yeah, this is the seventh and final edition. There's not going to be another one because Anastasi is, well, frankly dead. And it's just, there's not going to be one. I'd love there to be one, but there's not. All right. Software. We are going to use R, which is both a programming language and environment for statistical computing and data visualization. It's awesome. It's free. And frankly, it's probably one of the most useful things you will learn because uh, everything else you can Google. But once you learn R, it, it makes other software programming easier and it really puts you to the top of the heap when it comes to getting jobs and internships. Heck, I named my lab after the software, our computing lab. Uh, we'll also be using a free and open source user interface called our studio. Please use, like, use it. It makes it so much easier. So, so much easier. All right. Um, in terms of milestones, there will be six quizzes two quizzes per class chunk, and you can keep the best five, and you can skip one. So essentially, there are two per chunk coming up, and you can just skip one. I don't recommend skipping the first one because, well, you're going to have a hard time because uh, you want to save it. And the other thing we'll have is three large take-home assignments. These are multi-part aspects. Uh, so there'll be a qualitative piece and a quantitative piece. And for both of those pieces, you can keep the best two and skip one. So, and you can mix and match. So say you bombed the first quantitative one, but ace the first qualitative one. Awesome. Then you just drop the quant piece and move on. But they're due at the same time. They're due about five weeks, 10 weeks, and 15 weeks in. Cool. In terms of roadmap, we're going to cover the context of testing, including both an introduction and history, talk about some ethical and social considerations of testing, as well as do some review and just talk about interpretation of test scores. Next, it's the biggest chunk is the methods chunk. We're going to talk about reliability, validity, and within validity, both internal and external validity. And then we'll also talk about item analysis. This includes both factor analysis and item response theory. Both of these techniques are covered in the textbook. Uh, they're more advanced, but the fundamentals haven't changed. How they're implemented have, but the fundamentals haven't changed from like the 1930s. 
Uh, and last, we'll talk about application. How do we apply all this stuff to measures of individual differences, ability testing, personality testing? There are tons of methods of assessment. You'll get to see some really old-timey tests, and I'm um, hope and show you some modern tests as well, as much as I can through video. So uh, that's it for course logistics. Welcome to class, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.